It's been a year since I told you guys that the smart home industry had hatched a cunning plan to make us buy all of our smart home gear again. So if you don't remember the cunning plan, here it is. It's going to enable you to buy another one of these and buy another one of these with chip technology in it, and they'll be able to talk to each other. You could buy a sensor from Xiaomi and a bulb from Ikea, and they'll be able to communicate. They already can! I can do that because there is already a protocol that does that that you invented! You can't come along and say, hey, that thing we did, that Zigbee thing, pointless now. We've got this new thing, it's called Chip, it's gonna do exactly the same thing as the old thing, but you'll have to part with some more money. And you can understand my cynicism, because the same companies that told us we needed Zigbee to enable all of our smart home gear to work seamlessly, are the same companies that are now telling us we need matter to enable all of our smart home gear to work seamlessly. Whoa there, trusty steed! I am Sir Chip. I am here to rescue you from the smart home companies that ensured your equipment wouldn't be able to talk to one another. The fact that I am those companies all stood on top of each other in a white knight costume shouldn't be suspicious at all. I trust them! And after I pointed out that connected home over IP spelt choip, not chip, there was a sudden name change, but the Alliance is now calling itself Matter instead of cho ch Chip. Choip. I don't know how to take the piss out of that. It's such a good name. What's the matter you? Hey! Why you look so sad? Hey! What's the matter you? Hey! Your smart home is so bad. Google and Amazon are here to save the day. Uh... The smart home industry is absolutely f***ing terrible and everybody in it's a greedy b****, especially Jeff Bezos. Mr. Socky, they're not the words. So we're nearly a year on. And I wanted to see if I was right to be as skeptical as I was about Project Chip Ch Short Matter. And the answer is not entirely. I, Paul Hibbert, might have actually been wrong about some of it. Don't get me wrong. Matter is almost definitely rooted in a plant pot of pure evil, and it will definitely have some negative impact on you at some point, but we'll come to that later on in the video. In the meantime, does matter really matter? And when the chips adapt, I'm not doing these puns. Who, who wrote this? I don't know who I'm talking to. I wrote all of this. It was me. So what is matter? It's actually far more valuable than I gave it credit for, if it works. So I thought it was directly replacing Zigbee, and I couldn't see the point in it because it seemingly does exactly the same thing. But what Matter is actually intended to do is to sit over the top of Zigbee, and Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth Low Energy, and a whole bunch of other protocols, including potentially Z-Wave, so that all of those different devices will be able to communicate with one another using a unified language called Matter. Whereas Zigbee came along and said, Forget Wi-Fi, and infrared, and RF, and Bluetooth, and X10. Buy everything again and use our new Zigbee protocol. Zigbee, because f all of the expensive stuff you already bought. Ah, oh, the Zigbee! Matter, on the other hand, is suggesting that the whole industry gets behind a new language so that if you've got a flick button, which uses Bluetooth, you'll be able to press it and get a signal sent to your Philips Hue light bulbs, which use Zigbee. And they'll be able to talk to each other directly without ever sending a request off your network because both hubs will talk the same language. And this all sounds great, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound great? We'll forget that obviously we just do that with an API. This way is more straightforward. And all we've got to do is have both smart home companies sign up to Matter that and pay matter $20,000 a year. What? $20,000 a year? And matter are like, oh, look at us with our open source approach. We're practically hippies. 20 grand a year. And they have the cheek to call themselves non-profit. That's bollocks. What, does the money just evaporate? Okay, why well, join matter, huh? We don't need your money, we just need to know you're serious. Yeah, right, of course, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, I had to check that wasn't on fire then. <laughs> Fantasy bollocks. 
I'm sorry, but that money is going so I've done the math. There's five and a half million dollars going to them every year from their participants and their promoters. I'm sorry, I should fax me. That's because you're a big dumb idiot. Where do smart home companies get their money from? You. They, they get their money from you. And this is why Zigbee was always so much more expensive than Wi-Fi. It's because the same cretins that are involved in Matter were the same cretins that were involved in Zigbee. And they charged an enormous fee to the companies just to stamp the word Zigbee on the box. The same exact thing is happening now, which means that the Matter products will be so much more expensive than the Wi-Fi equivalents. We're headed down the same road again. Unfortunately, my prediction is that Matter will slowly push out all of the smaller smart home companies until there's nothing left but the big players. Media outlets such as Tom's Guide have already, already, Matter's not even released yet, they've already started to demonize anyone who isn't on board. Disreputable, disreputable, and DesignWell365 are strangely enough using exactly the same terminology. Not reputable. If you're not with matter, you're not reputable. Strange that. It's almost as if there's a smear campaign going on already, isn't it? Yes, it's a little bit like that. Not reputable. $20,000. Not reputable. $20,000. Matter-enabled devices are going to have a huge advantage over the smaller players. There is the potential that they will just have one app to not only onboard all of the devices, but also control them all. And with every manufacturer working hand in hand so that if you buy one thing from one guy and one thing from another guy, they'll all work together, people aren't going to buy anything but Matter products despite the higher price tag. The smaller players in this market are going to get shoved out. Secondly, some of your devices will probably become obsolete. Amazon have already declared that the first generation and second generation Echo Dots will not have Matter support. Can't really complain about that because, you know, it could upgrade at some point. But if Amazon are doing that, what chance does this stand? With Apple's track record. They want us to do what? Give Matter support to the HomePod minis for free? <laughs> The Death Star will not fund itself, young Skywalker. Will it, Lord Vader? No quote. I actually think the HomePod Mini will almost definitely get Matter support. Apple are well in bed with Matter already, they're on the directorate, and they use Thread, which is a confirmed protocol under the Matter banner. So maybe I'm catastrophizing, but... I have been speaking with the founder of a very large smart home company. I'm not going to tell you who it is because he might not be very happy with me. All right, then keep your secrets. But he said on the phone, and I quote, matter is ridiculously expensive. He said he's not sure he can bring himself to use it for his future products because it is ridiculously expensive. If this is the case for a large smart home company that you will have heard of, then what chance do the smaller players have? So what advantages are there to matter? I'm gonna throw away my hub, right? Nope. If you're a Philips Hue user, then they're putting matter into the hub, not into the bulbs, which means you will still need to use Philips Hue's hub, even if you plan to trigger it using matter devices. This means the same for IKEA, it means the same for basically any company that has Zigbee products and a bridge, you're going to need to go through the bridge to get to those products because it's the bridge that's going to get matter support. At least all of your smart home traffic will be localized to your house now, right? Right? Our survey said... <laughs> nope. Because, although it's capable of it, there are companies that still rely entirely on the cloud. One of them being Amazon, for example. Every time you say, I want you to do something to she that she not be named, it's going to go to the internet, come back from the internet, and then go across your network to your Matter device and switch it on. It's not going to go from your Amazon Echo to your Matter device like you would expect it to. This might be the case in future, but right now, I think Jeff is collecting that juicy, juicy data from you. Meanwhile, in a spaceship that looks nothing like a massive cock. That's the last time Paul Hibbert makes a Jeff Bezos joke. Fly, my pretties, fly! Bezos.
is us in space You better know your place You should never look directly at his face So is it all doom and gloom? I've actually changed my mind quite a lot about matter since nearly a year ago. Since I realized it's not just a simple replacement for Zigbee, I can see the obvious benefits of it if it works. The only issue is that it's entirely dependent on companies that I do not trust. Apple's HomePod Mini has never been able to control the Nest thermostats, at least not without a load of faffing around with the computer and home bridge, because the companies just don't like each other. Now they're expected to work together to make this all harmonious and synchronous and whatever else. The question is, why doesn't it already work? If it doesn't already work, what is that reason? And is that reason still going to be there despite the fact that both companies are on board with Matter? Matter have delayed their release date for a second time to 2022. And I can only imagine this is because they're struggling to convince Apple's Emperor and Captain Cockrocket that working together will be profitable. The smart home could be about to become far more accessible to far less technical people but at the cost of a $20,000 a year price tag to every company that wants to become involved. My feeling on this is that it's gonna push out the smaller players in the industry that do all of the innovating. We will probably end up with a less innovative industry and a tighter knit society of unpleasant characters that would love to charge you a subscription to turn your lights on and off. What do you guys think? Am I being horribly cynical? I guess I was a year ago. Perhaps I am this time too. Let me know in the comments if you disagree or if you have any further information on matter that I haven't already produced today. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people here are the only reason that this channel exists. And I know I say it every week, but they are the best people on earth. These are my patrons from Patreon. They fund this channel and they keep me going. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I will flipping well love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. I'm fine if it fucks me. <laughs> I opened those a week ago. <laughs> That's disgusting. Using this unifying protocol called Matter. Not called a protocol, it's called a standard. Someone in the comments will have a bitch fest. <laughs> Mr. Socky, they're not the words. the sooner we start paying subscriptions for things like Amazon... Uh, <laughs>